In this video lecture, we're going to talk about how to use the neural network toolbox in MATLAB to fit data with pretty complex relationships between inputs and outputs. There was a previous video demonstration on sort of the theory and overview of how neural networks work for machine learning, and now we're going to show you how to, how to access a toolbox, which is actually quite easy to use, which I hope you'll find through this demonstration. So I've written a MATLAB script here, and I'll just walk you through what it does. So first I say, how many data points do I want to generate? So I'm in the real world, you're going to have data from an actual system, and then you'll try to fit the neural network to, to model or to predict input and output relationships from an actual system. But in this case, we're just going to do a simulation-based system. So I'm just generating some random data. So I want to have 2,000 random data points, I'm going to have six inputs in this example, so I just want to generate a bunch of random numbers um, for these inputs. So I'm just saying they're all going to be between 0 and 10, and so I just create 2,000 by 1 column vectors that have that are generally going to have a value between 0 and 10, and I do that for six different variables. Okay, so now this is the relationship that I'm simulating. So I've added in here a a pretty complex nonlinear relationship, and I tried to include various nonlinear terms. So I have 10 times the sine of x1, or input 1, plus the square root of input 2, plus 5 times, the, 5 times input 3, plus 0.05 times input 4 to the 0 0.6 power, minus 0 0.003 times x5 to the third power, minus the log of x6, and then I've added in just some random noise that you'll see in any system where there's measurement error and when there's just some randomness in the process itself. So this is the functional relationship that we're generating. So imagine that this is some physical process that you're observing in the real world. And now our objective is going to be to find a neural network model that can mimic or recreate these relationships. So the first thing we do is we stack all of our inputs, we stick them side by side, so all of these 2,000 by 1 vectors are now going into a 2,000 by 6 matrix, so this capital X just represents all of my inputs concatenated together side by side into, into a matrix. I'm going to use this command, I'm going to define my neural network, and I'm going to use this command from MATLAB called feedforwardnet. So this is one of the functions that's contained in MATLAB's neural network toolbox, one of many. So we're just going to show you how to use a simple one here, but it's actually quite powerful. So I'm going to use this command, net equals feed forward net, and that's going to be a function of some integer, some positive integer value. So n is going to be the number of neurons that I want in my hidden layer. So I'm already going to have six input nodes, because I have six inputs, but then one thing you can configure in the neural network is how many hidden nodes do you have. So I'm going to start with just one, and remember this is going to be a three-layer perceptron, so, if, um, so it has n, n number of nodes in the hidden layer, and as you can see I've written the code so that I can just easily go back and change how many nodes I'm using and try different fits. So I've defined this uh, feedforward network, and it's just a variable, a MATLAB variable, called net. It's a special type of MATLAB variable where it has a complex structure where you can have um, extensions of the variable name to reveal different parts of information. So it's not just a simple, um, it's not a, such a simple variable. So for example, if I run my code up to here, I can call net and show you what it looks like. So it's got information about um, how it's configured, how it's initialized, how it's simulated, how it's trained. So it's got a lot of information. It's also got information on the weights. So I could do net.iw and get a cell that's going to have actual numbers in there. So there's nothing in there yet because I've just defined it as basically a blank neural network. And once I go through and train it, it will know how many inputs and how many outputs I have, and it will populate those different parameters. So I have six inputs, and I'm going to have one output. So this y is going to be 
a 2000 by 1, basically it's just a y is just a function of all six of my different inputs. So I'm going to try and fit my model to predict y based on various combinations of my x's. So I do this training now by calling this train command in MATLAB. And so you see my one of my outputs is just net itself. So net is going to be defined as whatever comes out of this training routine. So I'm just going for, um, I'm basically just going for the default options in MATLAB. You can certainly go in and configure a whole lot about how this network is trained and how it's configured, but we'll just stick with the default case where the only thing we really need to define is the number of neurons. So this net actually wants the transpose of the X matrix. So instead of a 2000 by 6, it's going to get transpose using this little apostrophe to be a 6 by 2000. That's really just syntax that MATLAB requires. And we do the same thing with our Y. So instead of a 2000 by 1, the transpose of that is going to be a 1 by 2000. Really no big deal. It's just syntax that this train function requires. So this is really, this one simple line of code is really where everything is happening. This is where the network is getting trained. I do some validation afterward in this code where I define um, x1 now over a range. I'm just keeping all of my other inputs constant and I just want to demonstrate um, in a two-dimensional graph how well this network is learning. So I'm only going to vary x1 and I'll show a graph of x1 on the x-axis and y on the y-axis. And then because I'm holding everything else constant for this model validation, um, I'm only going to plot y um, versus x1. But you can see I'm recreating my y now here so that I can plot it. And then I just uh, I go through and simulate my neural network. So this simple command, so now net um, can act as a function as well. So if I call net and then give it a column vector with all of my inputs, this net will now give me my model predicted output. And I'll show you how that's done as we go. So I'm going to step through the next step of my code, which is going to do this training algorithm. And that, this actually pops up a GUI, a graphical user interface, that shows you how the training is proceeding. So if I step through this next command, it's going to pop up this GUI. And so it gives me this GUI. It shows me the architecture of my network. And if I hit that regression button, it shows me how my regression proceeded. So you see I actually have a fairly decent distribution of data, but I don't have a great R squared. This one node network may not contain enough information for me to really be able to map my ins inputs to my outputs. So let's go through and plot this. So now I'm going to generate different Y data based on holding x2 through x6 constant and just varying x1. So I initialize my y model and now I'm going to go through and do this 2,000 different times. I'm going to simulate, not 2,000 different times, uh, the length of x1, so 101 different times. I'm going to go through and simulate what my model predicts as compared to the data. So I'm just going to skip that part. Okay, so this is a uh, this is the actual data, and this is what my neural network is predicting. So it, even though my R squared on the surface might appear to be okay, this really probably isn't a great prediction unless I'm looking for just like an order of magnitude estimate. So I do want to go back and clarify how to simulate the neural network. So remember it's a variable called net, but you can also use it essentially as a function, or I could say What's my model output if I have all my inputs are equal to 3? So if I go in and give it a column vector, this is going to spit out my model prediction. So you can call this net in a pretty simple way with my x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6 arranged in a column vector, and that spits out my model prediction for y. So that model fit wasn't great. And I'm probably not going to do much better with just a single neuron. So I'm going to go try it again. I'm going to change my number of neurons now to 2. And try this model fit again. So I run my code. That pulls up this GUI. 
And if you're able to catch it, you can actually see this model learning in real time. Okay, so now with two neurons, you're seeing that it is capturing some of this behavior, but that um, two neurons probably isn't enough to model this relationship. It's modeling the relationship uh, from Y to all of our inputs, but really the relationship we're trying to observe is how well is it capturing the Y as a function of input 1 or X1. So it's, it's actually capturing that shape fairly well, but as you can see, it kind of falls apart here. So and again, we're looking, it's looking like we got a decent fit. So now what I'm going to do is um, just, well, let me run this again first. So we're getting an R squared of 0.956, and I'm not changing anything in my code. It's still going to have the same input data. It's still going to have the same neural network structure. But if you remember from our last demonstration, this neural network toolbox is guessing random values for all my initial weights. So, so that means my results might change every time. This is a non-convex, non-linear programming problem, so it's it's going to settle into a local minimum. So those, the random weights basically determine which local minimum you're setting into. You're settling into. So you can actually observe this learning as you go learning as it goes. So as it takes these iterations and it calls them epochs, it's trying to learn. And so now we had a worse initial guess. We're setting into in, settling into a worse local minimum and we're not getting as good of an R squared and that bears itself out here. We're not capturing that relationship at all. So after a couple of tries, um, we might need to move on to try more neurons. So that gives us more model fitting parameters and we'll probably get better R squared values. So again, not a good fit. So there is definitely this element of trial and error and seeing how well your data um, extrapolates when you have different combinations of inputs or how well your data interpolates. And as you can see, MATLAB is giving us the R, the R value actually for our training data, for our validation, and for our testing data, and then it also gives it us that for everything. So I've changed my number of nodes to three, and I'm going to try retraining. And it's fun to see this learning as it goes. We're getting a much better R value. And I misspoke earlier. This is actually R, not R squared. And you can see that this three node, it captured this behavior pretty well, but it didn't quite get the full story. Um, so it's it's not doing so great over in these regions of X1. So let's give this another shot. Let's actually go to four now. So in general, the fewer parameters you have to use, the better. And you might even want to sacrifice accuracy in terms of your R squared value in favor of um, simplicity. And you're also preventing against overfitting. So four gives us this fit. So it still might not be that good. So I'll go back and just try four again. So you can see it learning as we go, and you can see generally we're getting uncorrelated residuals, which is a good sign. But are we actually capturing that behavior? So we're still not doing a great job. So I'm going to go to five. So keep in mind, so even though these are pretty good R values, and that'll result in good R squared values, it's still not capturing the behavior of exactly what I want. So it, it kind of depends on what you care about. Is this good enough? And I want to see, I know that a neural network can represent a sine wave a lot better than this. And I know it's, this function isn't just a sine wave. It has a lot of pretty complex behavior in it. But I, I know that it can do better than this, and I may want better accuracy than this. So I'm still trying five neurons. Okay, so we're still not quite getting there. Let's try six. Okay, so now we're up into the almost 0.99 range in terms of our, our, our R value. 
So hopefully this results in a better a better relationship. Note that my code hasn't reproduced this. Okay, so now we're using six neurons, which means six um, of these hidden nodes, which means we have a whole lot of model parameters in there already. And now our neural network is capturing this sine wave with a pretty high level of accuracy. We have uncorrelated residuals. So we may actually, if we really cared about what we're doing th with this data, we may try some other validation steps, try um, seeing how it's capturing the relationship of y with x2 and y with x3. So we're really just looking at a snapshot of our model and seeing how, it's, how well it's doing with respect to one input. But we might care about doing this with, with respect to other inputs. But as far as this video demonstration is concerned, you can you can see that a neural network, it does have this learning aspect where it's changing those model parameters until it gets these predictions just right. And you can see that it has quite a bit of power so that it can represent a function like this, um, a sine function using completely different model structure, this hyperbolic tangent. So this hopefully demonstrates the power of a neural network, but you can also see that there's a bit of trial and error here. There's a, certainly a lot that needs to go into this.